Welcome back to the Campbell Tech channel, where we are all about simplifying complexity. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement the adapter design pattern in C Sharp. The adapter pattern is a structural design pattern that is used to convert an interface of a class into another interface that clients expect. This design pattern lets classes work together that couldn't otherwise because of their incompatible interfaces. Let's look at a class diagram of the adapter pattern. Remember, the adapter design pattern is used to convert an interface of a class into another interface that client code expects. So here we have our client code that expects a target interface, but the problem is that we have an adapty interface that is not compatible with the expectations of the client. And therefore, we have the adapter that effectively converts the adapt the incompatible interface, to the target interface that the client expects. So let's look at a practical use case. Let's say that we've got a legacy system that works with XML and SOAP services. Therefore, we created this XML parser interface, and we still have some of those services floating around and therefore still many different XML documents. So this parser is capable of passing XML to an object as well as converting an object to XML. Now, later on, we decided to rather depend on REST services. So we moved to JSON. Therefore, we've got this JSON parser interface capable of passing JSON to an object as well as converting an object back to JSON. Now we want to migrate all of our XML documents to JSON. And we can do that by introducing this XML to JSON adapter, which effectively converts the XML parser interface to the JSON interface that the client code expects. And here you'll see that the XML to JSON adapter will actually implement the JSON parser interface. And therefore, it'll implement the pass method as well as the convert to JSON method. So in our code, you'll see that we'll take XML, pass it to an object via the XML to JSON adapter. There you'll see it'll invoke XML parser.pass to XML. And then what we'll do is we'll convert that object to JSON. And then in our client code, we'll print out the JSON, effectively converting an XML document to JSON. But this will make more sense when we write the actual code. We are now going to implement the adapter pattern. You'll notice that I've already written some code. And the reason for that is because I want you to zoom in on the adapter pattern implementation itself, rather than focusing on the parser logic. But do not worry, I'll still take you through that as well. So let's again look at our artifacts. So the program.cs class is our client code. The XML parser was our adapt T, the interface that is incompatible with the target interface. In other words, this is not the interface that the client code ultimately expects. And then we've got our I JSON parser interface, which is our target interface. In other words, the interface that the client expects or wants to use. So if we go to our program.cs class, we could say that this is effectively our legacy implementation because here we've got some XML that we are parsing using our iXML parser interface. And then we are passing it to a note object. So here we've got a plain old c -sharp object with some attributes which allows us to serialize the XML, the serializable attribute, the XML root attribute for the class that we are serializing. And you'll see that I've got lowercase note here. And that is because we've got our root XML node there as note lowercase. And then we've got our XML elements, all of them lowercase as well. So if we go back here, you'll see that once we've actually gone and passed the XML to an object, we again converted back to XML. But now, as I've mentioned, when we looked at the class diagram, is we want to move towards JSON. But 
we said we still have some XML documents and therefore we want to convert them. And our client code actually wants to use our new standard, the JSON parser rather than the XML parser. But we can't simply pass XML to our JSON parser because that would be incompatible. So what are we to do? Let's create our adapter. So create a new class and call it XML to JSON adapter. Now remember from the class diagram that this adapter should actually implement the target interface, which is our iJSON parser interface. So let's implement iJSON parser. Now iJSON parser uses generics, so we'll do the same for our XML to JSON adapter. So let's add T there, and then we'll pass the generic T to the JSON parser as well. Now, if you're not used to generics, don't focus on this too much because that's got nothing to do with the adapter pattern. I'll do my best to explain it plainly, but I'm sure a lot of you understand generics very well. So let's go ahead and implement the interface. And then you'll see that we've got the convert to JSON and the pass method that we have to implement. I'm just going to swap them around because this is how we had it on the class diagram. The XML to JSON adapter, if you can recall, actually uses the adapt interface, which is our iXML parser. So therefore we are going to say iXML parser. It also uses generics, so we'll pass T there and we'll call it XML parser equals new XML parser. And then what we'll do, we'll say return XML parser dot pass and we'll pass the data, which will be our XML in the form of a string. So this will still come back as an object then where the adapter basically uses the adapt interface to pass the XML to an object. And then in the convert to JSON, in other words, if we pass that object back, we don't want XML to be sent to the client. Instead, we want JSON. So this method, in other words, is responsible for converting the XML, so to speak, to JSON. So we'll say I JSON parser. Again, we're using generics here. JSON parser equals new JSON parser. And we'll say return JSON parser dot convert to JSON and we'll pass the object there. Okay, so now what we've got here is a XML to JSON adapter that is able to pass XML and is also able to convert the object that was converted from the XML into JSON. So if we go to our program class, let's just run the code as is so that you can see that it prints out XML. There you'll see that the XML document is effectively printed out to the console with a note from Jane to John saying, please remember to pick me up at work. Now this note object, like I said, is just a plain old c -sharp object that looks like the XML document. But now let's go ahead and use our adapter to convert this XML to JSON. So we'll say I JSON parser, that's the interface that the client code expects. And we'll say new XML to JSON adapter this time. And here we are passing our type to the generic type T that the XML to JSON adapter, as well as our adapt T and target interfaces expect. And we can keep this part the same. So we are passing some XML, but here we are not going to convert to XML, but rather to JSON. So if we run our code this time, you'll see that it actually prints out the JSON and not XML. So 
This XML to JSON adapter is basically our implementation of the adapter pattern that effectively converted iXML parser, our adaptee interface, to iJSON parser, our target interface, and therefore we were able to convert XML to JSON. Now, as I've said, I'll show you what the parsing logic looks like, but I just wanted to get to this point because now you already know exactly how to implement the adapter pattern without focusing too much on the use case. But let's zoom in on the use case a bit. Now I've gone and passed the XML by using the XML serializer object. So if you hover over it, you'll see it's from system.xml, the namespace there. And then we've got our private read-only field here. And then in the constructor, we are basically telling it that this XML serializer should be of type T, which is the type we are passing through in our generics there, which is our note in our use case. And then here we are saying that the root attribute is node lowercase because we are effectively saying that take the class name which is note that we're passing through to lowercase. So this looks exactly like that note there. And then you'll see that in our pass method, we are actually using a text reader that effectively takes the XML in string format and then putting it into a text reader. And then the deserialized method of the XML serializer expects the text reader and then we cast it to the T, the type that we are passing through, which is note in our case. So this is how I'm passing the XML to an object. And that T that it returns again is our note object. And then the convert to XML is where we are sending it the note object, our T. And then here, this time we're using a string writer. And then we are basically saying that Take that object and write it into a string or convert it to a string. In other words, XML in the format of a string again. Now, if you haven't seen this syntax yet, uh, the using statement without the curly brackets, this is the new syntax where you don't need to add the curly brackets, but it will still invoke the dispose method, even if you are not adding all of this in a block. And then this new syntax is the same as new string writer. But you don't need to do that. As you can see there, new expression can be simplified. And that's what I did there. Okay, so this is how I implemented this logic. So let's go and look at the JSON passing logic. Here you can see it's quite simple. We are using system.text.json. Let's get rid of all these unused using statements. And then here you are seeing that a JSON string that is passed through gets deserialized into the type that we are passing through, our note type. And then convert to JSON is serialized again from an object to JSON in the form of a string. And then for us to print it out so nicely indented or prettified, like it's also called, you can have a second parameter where we actually specify our serializer options and then say write indented equals true. Okay, so this is the actual passing logic. Like I said, I will show you, but this course really tries to keep this quite simple and demystify structural design patterns. So as you can see, it's extremely simple to implement the adapter pattern in C Sharp. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to our channel. Till next time.